Good evening, race fans. It's that time again for Burt Wojcik, Justin Snyder, and Earl Hoon Jr. to bring you all the latest news in the Spring Car world right here on PA Spring Car Live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another great episode of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Burt Hill Gang TV. Obviously, you know me. I'm Earl Hoon Jr. That's Burt Woodtruck. And welcome back from the dead, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He's back with us. Holy shit. I can't believe it. Uh, and he wasn't late. Uh, Justin Justin Snyder. Justin, welcome back to the show. You got what nothing. What are we doing here? That, that's all right. Here? That's all right. Uh, Who welcome, are you? Yeah, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have a great show on board. Uh, we have the, the Still City Outlaw, Tim Schaefer. He's going to be joining us here a little bit later. And, of course, as traditional here, uh, we're going to wrap up last weekend's event with the World of Outlaw Cross and Sprint Car Series and the Pennsylvania Posse up at the Speed Palace Port Royal Speedway. What a race it was, Bert. Well, we kind of knew this was going to happen at some point this year. We just didn't know when, and we kind of prayed it didn't was going to happen or it wasn't going to happen this year. But... It finally happened. Donnie Shaw has picked up his Pennsylvania win this year, and it, what a race it was. It came down the last five laps after Brock Zierfoss pretty much dominated that first half of the race going up to that first yellow there. And then I'm standing up there on the on the um, um, the stage there, and I'm wondering to myself, why is Brock giving him the low or giving the high side? Because the high side was really coming in, Earl. Yeah, and yeah. then toward, you know, towards about midway through the race, and all of a sudden, Donnie Shaw, it's, Got him in the three there, and then that was pretty much all she wrote. But then Lance Suisse had one shot, one shot only to get Donnie shots. Well, it was all about a green-white checkered finish. And, and I can't believe Donnie uh, let the bottom go there. With You know, that's the line that the 69K runs all the time. And, and it came off the turn number two on the restart. Yeah, but that top side was just too fast. You know, shots got a hell of a run off of two, which we see multiple times in Port Royal this year. You know, when you get that high side in uh, two there, you just get a, a slingshot down the back straightaway there. And that's really what propels shots to the lead in there and ultimately to the win. Absolutely. Uh, Donnie Schatz won over Lance Suisse, Darren Pittman, Brad Sweet, Jason Johnson. Rounded out the top five. And uh, Justin, you know, I, I, there's already news. Silly season looks like it's starting already, and we're not even done with 2017. But it looks like, and we said this many times, that Port Royal Speedway has raised the bar for Saturday night tracks, and they pretty much raised the bar for local racing here in Central PA. Yeah, there's a lot of rumors going around there. What's going to happen next year? Um, tracks, drivers. I've heard all sorts of stuff. Yes. Um, I don't know what's true and what's not, but at the end of the day, um, Port Royal can be happy knowing that they have – they certainly set a standard that everyone's going to have to live up to. Um, I think the real interesting thing is not even going to be Saturday nights, but Friday nights. I can't wait to see what happens with Williams Grove. I think they've got to uh, certainly raise their game a little bit. Um, we've talked about the tradition and everything, and they kind of ride on that a little bit. And I think that um, if there was ever a time to make a move, to do something, to – Breathe some fresh air into maybe that speedway. It's now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do agree. Uh, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the Grove. Uh, I mean, look at the National Open all three days. It was, it was absolutely packed. It was packed. jam-packed with fans and, and good race cars. So there's nothing bad about the Grove. But obviously, times do change. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been on the game with social media uh, uh, this year. And, and yeah. yeah, maybe, you know, maybe... I don't really know what the Grove can do different. Maybe they could put Musco lighting all around the track, but there's really not a light problem there. And and Lincoln Speedway, they made the announcement about two weeks ago that uh, you know, put they're, boxes in. yeah, they're going to put VIP boxes. Where are they going to put them? I have no idea. I think, I, I think the wild card in the whole thing is is Susky, Susquehanna. What are they going to do? They keep getting bigger. They keep get, bringing more in. They keep making more improvements. There's only three days to a weekend. Somebody's got to have to give yeah. somewhere here and there. I don't think we can do Sunday night racing um, weekly. I don't think that's no. A well, I think the racing season is too long. Not at, yeah, we we talked about this, you know, between us with um, I know my rant per se with Sealands Grove Speedway, um, what they're doing up there, and there's just only so many days and there's only so many cars and everyone can't be at the same place right. at the same time. So. Something's going to have to happen. It'll be interesting. I well, think, um, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, uh, we were talking, you know, you, bro, I think you said uh, Eldora and places like that thrive on special shows. And maybe it's, I don't know. I don't want to see less racing at all. I think we all love racing, but maybe it's best for business. Before you answer that, but you know what? I, I go to races every day of the week. I, I mean, we, we, us three up here, Andy does, you know, we, we go. That's what I was, you know, raised on going to the Grove on Friday and, and when we were kids going to the Springs on Saturday or, or Port Royal, whatever. And I don't want to ever see weekly racing go away. But, however, 
with the way the sport is starting to go, and, and we had this on the show before, weekly racing does not look very good in 410 sprint car competition here in Central PA with the car counts. I mean, I'm a fan. I don't want to go to a track and watch 18 cars. That gives me two heat races and a 25-lap feature with 18 cars, and I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. I don't care on how good the racing is. I, I, I'm set on my ways. I want at least, you know, 21 cars. That gives me three heat races. Yeah, exactly. And I think before we're, before we're going back to our point here about the special race set, we have enough tracks around here that you can run Friday and Saturday night no problem every week. But yet, we don't have that special show track like they do at Eldora. You know, you have two tr- – or in Ohio. You have two tracks out there, you know, between Ohio – or Eldora – yeah, I can't even talk right now. Eldora and uh, Mansfield. And even in New York, you have two tracks with Rolling Wheels and Weed Sport. So, really, Pennsylvania doesn't have that really special show track. And – it may come down to a point where one of these tracks are just going to have to give in and try it and see what happens. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I know. As long as the car counts continue to support, like, Saturday's okay. I mean, Port Royal gets 25-plus every week, roughly. Lincoln gets their 25, and it's, a lot of it's based on where you're located as a team. You know, where's your shop at? Where's your sponsors at? That's where you're going to go. But – as things continue, I mean, and like I said, I, I think the wild card is Friday because right now Williams Grove is the only Friday show. They are the only ones in the house. I mean, and they still aren't getting 30-plus cars, which is wild because as and they we, could what be. else could they do? I mean, they're already paying the most in the entire state. Yeah. And up there with the tops of the entire country weekly, they're doing the Yellow Breaches races, so they're putting up the money throughout the year to make cars come out there. Just, uh, just for shits and giggles, what happens if Susky decides they want to run? some Friday night show. I think it's a bad move. I mean, uh, if you want to run on Friday nights, great. Don't go up against another track. I think you need to be in coordination with that track. And uh, it's bad business. It's bad business all around. In my, in, in my opinion, that's bad business all around. You can't do that. That is bad business. Yeah, especially with the track so close. I mean, you're talking about what? About maybe about 15 miles between the Grove and Susky. So I, that's just a terrible thing, I think, if they would go up against each other. And, and I think we talked about this earlier today. It's like, that's kind of the bad thing about Sealand's Grove and Port Royal because of them being so close. They're only a half hour apart. So maybe that's why some of the Sealand's Grove's car accounts like we have dwindled, especially like in the super late malls when they go up against each other on a Saturday night. I, uh, you know, I, the tracks just start to need to work together here. I mean, they're all businesses. I, I, I get that. I'm not going to take that anyway. But well, one of the, I think that – I mean, just an idea, but um, I think you almost – it would be – fans would be upset because you wouldn't get your weekly shows every week. You wouldn't get your Friday every week at Williams Grove. But almost if all the tracks came together and did – like I think you guys A series? Talked, like, you talked about it with uh, Donnie Christ last week. If they did almost like a speed week, like yeah. Monday, Wednesday, th- Friday, Saturday, like you alternate tracks and then you go the next week and – this guy's here. This guy's there. Or each week you've got – or every yeah, two each, weeks. Each week. Every two weeks you all, you've right, got this. Right. Whatever it is, if they work together and they create it just – I mean, already, they already have it through host heads, but the such a PA sprint car series. If they had a point system set up for all these tracks to come together, and we've seen the trend. seems to be a lot of guys aren't running for points anymore anyways. They're not running for weekly track championships. And that's a shame because – Little Freddie just won $18,000 at Williams Grove Speedway for a track championship, and that's by far more than what any other track in this state pays for a track championship. And I just don't understand. We've had these conversations all the time. There's no other sprint car track here in Central PA that runs on Friday nights. Nobody. The Grove could have 40 Plus cars, if they wanted, you know, if the drivers wanted to come down, it's not that far to come down wherever you live to Williams Grove. They've been starting later. Warm up, 7.30, heat races start at 8 o'clock, which seems like it has helped out some of the drivers. But why are people worried about <laughs> going to a track in Ohio or wherever six, seven, eight hours away when they could run 60 minutes down a highway to a local track that pays more than that track in Ohio or at least, you know, make the feature event? I think it just comes down to what your plans are overall. I mean, do you want to stick around here? Do you want to run weekly? Do you want to be a guy who's known to run Williams Grove every week? Or if you're a guy who maybe has ambitions to go run the All-Star Tour and is looking to maybe gain some sponsors out a little farther away from home, you know, maybe you make that trek. I don't know. I honestly don't know the reason for it. You know, we've seen, especially this year, I, and it's mind-boggling, honestly, I've seen so many little teams who run one week, one track a week and when it comes time for the Outlaws to come to town, they're traveling to Ohio or they're yeah. going to Western PA to hit up a 3000 to win show. I mean, they think they have a better chance. I get it. You might, if you win, you're going to make more money than if you 
don't qualify against the World of Outlaws or if you finish 24th or something. But it's just it's an interesting concept, and I think we have a new dynamic here in the area, that's for sure. And I think also maybe we might look at some of the motor programs too because the Grove's not easy on motors. So, I mean, that's been a given fact for years. But yet there's some of these teams that could come down 322 and run the Grove with the Port Royal motor. Or I understand if you run Lincoln, if you only have one motor for Lincoln, yeah, you kind of want to go there if you're a team owner, I would think, because of it being a little bit easier on motors. But yet, some of these guys from Port Royal, I think they can come down here because, you know, they have their motors tuned in for a half mile. I agree. I agree. But uh, it's all but the off season here in Central Bay, which sucks. But uh, <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see uh, what comes uh, in 2018 at our local tracks. But the World of Outlaws did go up to New York last weekend. They got rained out at Weedsport. But, however, on Sunday, they went up to Ransomville. And our guest here later on the night, Tim Schaefer, picked up the win. In a hell of a race holding off Brad Sweet and Shane Stewart. Donnie Shots and David Gravel, who yelled off most of the race. Gravel exploded a right rear on the last lap coming into the checkers. You see two to go. Schaefer's in the gully on the, yeah, on the front, on the front stretch, stretch. Yeah, And he's back on the track. And I was like, oh, man, he freaking just <laughs> blew that one. But uh, what an interesting track that is. Such a small, narrow front stretch and back stretch to where really there is no room for error. Right. Like, he really lucked out there. I'd be interested to hear what he was thinking when that happened. Yeah, for sure. I mean, still, I mean, great job by Tim Schaefer picking up his second World of Outlaw win. Of the year, but he had to really work to get that uh, win over Brad Sweet because Sweet was on him most of the race, especially in lap traffic. Yes, sir. Uh, Sweet was a coming. Uh, Brad Sweet finished second, Shane Stewart third, Denny Shots fourth, and David Gravel rounded out another top five. And uh, I mean, uh, here's the thing about New York tracks they're they're totally different than than what we're used to. And and I don't know. I mean, New York, the, their clay is different, and, and, and it just looks like it's hard slick right from the warm-ups. Well, I think that's what they're used to mostly. I mean, they want that hard slick track. I mean, if you notice, like, I'm going to use Super Dirt Car, for example. Whenever they come in, they want a hard slick track with Super Dirt Car because that's what they're used to in New York. They're not used to what we have normally down here in Pennsylvania where they water the track, you know, try and, you know, bring that uh, berm down a little bit. But yet... They always try to prep the tracks, you know, for the modifieds, it seems like, and they try and bring it over for the Be- spring cars. and banging, sliders. You know <laughs> exactly. I mean? Listen, the, the, track, exciting, the track can though. be whatever the hell you want it to be when you can just hit the guy next to you and keep going and call it racing. I mean, whatever. Hey, I, they, they proved that at Susky. They were, they were beating and banging on each other. But sometimes that's, that's yeah. fun to watch. Sometimes it is. I'm like, man, I just want to see them pass each other. Yeah, just, right? yeah I agree. <laughs> I agree. It's definitely that, different. That, yeah, it could be a little tough, though, to pass on some of those tracks, though. It's so very, it's very maybe unique. make some good racing. Very unique. Yeah, it's very unique. And, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another great episode of PA Sprint Car Live. We do have one guest on. However... We're going to open up the Fooling Injected Motorsports Fan Zone to you fans, and, and we're going to try to do like a little fan forum with you uh, great people. And, uh, you know, if you want to discuss anything in the racing world on the second half of the show, make sure you put that in the uh, comment section below. That's the Fooling Injected Motorsports Fan Zone, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the show. But we're going to take a little quick commercial break from our partners at Pace Performance. Good evening, race fans. Derek Snyder here from Pace Performance. Pace Performance is your complete source for all of your automotive needs. The nation's leading retailer of Chevy Performance Parts is also home to thousands of aftermarket performance parts, regardless of your vehicle's manufacturer. Visit PacePerformance.com to shop 24-7 and see the largest selection at one convenient location. And thank you for tuning in to Beer Hill Gang TV. Thank you, Derek Snyder and Pace Performance. And uh, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> I mean, without doubt, Donnie Schatz, what a, what a race, and he, and he has to earn the He has to. I mean, 19 wins in a World of Outlaw uh, Sprint Car Series this year. Just an unbelievable season by that uh, Articat Treks on out road, off-road uh, Ford Performance number 15 team. Yes, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now, it's the Still City Outlaw, Tim Schaefer, one up at uh, Ransomville. Tim, thank you for taking some time, and, and c- congrats on your win last weekend. All right, thanks. Thanks for having me on, guys. Hey, man. Uh, it seems like you're having a pretty good season uh, running in this Rudzik car and uh, pretty much dabbling in whatever race you want to go to. Yeah, it's been pretty cool. We made our own schedule up. Um, we ran a little bit out on a little star up Central PA, um, Ohio, pretty much where we want to do, and uh, it's been working out pretty good. Now, I'm interested. I mean, you've primarily run the uh, All-Star Tour in the last few years. You've done the Outlaw deal. When you're picking and choosing where you want to go, and you're kind of, I mean, are you picking based on the purse? Are you picking on based 
where maybe you're better at? Or I mean, how do you make a schedule when you're kind of just going with the flow? Um, basically on a purse. Um, we can race and, and give ourselves a chance to, to make some decent money. You know, it's uh, it's it's pretty neat. You know, I've raced for points since you know in, in the nineties, ninety five, ninety six. And then the last couple of years, I've been kind of doing this open schedule, and I really like it. And, you know, Tim, you've been all over the world. You've been all over the country. You're even a regular here in Central PA uh, back in the day. And uh, what's 2018 looking like for you? You know, are you going to be in the Rudzik 49? Are you going to be in another car? Are you going to be running the same schedule? Or, or what What does 2018 look like for you? Um, yeah, basically, we have been in the 49 car at Rudzik. And um, we're playing, doing the same Basically, same schedule, maybe even a little bit more if we can get a little bit more financial help. So, Tim, I mean, but being in, you know, an Aliquippa there, I mean, you're kind of centralized there between going to Central PA and going out to Ohio or New York or wherever have you. Where does that kind of give you an advantage by being out there? Because then, I mean, you kind of can audible the last minute and say, hey, if there's rain at one place here, you can kind of, you know, turn around, go back and try and make another race. Exactly, and we have done that too. You know, it's um, yeah. If it looks like rain or a good chance of rain, um, we have gone the other direction, and it makes it really neat. Where you're not committed just to doing one deal, and you you can bounce around like that, and and, and it makes it funner. I mean, I, I'm playing schedules for years, you know, and for points, and and when it's raining, you got to go no matter what, you know. And it's pretty nice when you, know, you can kind of make your own decisions and. You know, it works out really good for the team. Now, I've been on I've been on your guys' bandwagon since the beginning of the year. I think I've been talking up you guys since the start. You looked fast out the gate, and honestly, every time you guys seem to show up, you're I mean, I think you're probably about a top five car. You won two outlaw shows. You picked up some other wins here and there. What I mean, I'm sure your expectations were to be fast. You want to win races. But how has this year gone in terms of just how you thought it would go? I mean, has this been better than what you thought might happen this year? Yeah, really, it has been. Um, it, it's all about the team clicking and enjoying each other and having fun, you know. And me and Cody Jacobs have worked together several times in the past where we've really clicked and we work great, you know, together. So, um, but, you know, it always it, it takes time to get everything going and everybody getting comfortable and communicating. But um, our deal seemed to click off a little bit quicker. For you fans that are just tuning in here, shame on you. Should have been here a little bit ago, but that's all right. We have the Steel City Outlaw, Tim Schaefer, joining us. If you have any questions for Tim, make sure you put them in the fully injected motorsports fan zone below. That is the comment section right below our screen. Now, Tim, I think the main question here is uh, Ransomville. He picked up the win there on uh, Monday night. What was going through your head there when he hit the goalie there on uh, coming out of turn four there? Because a lot of us thought there uh, that might be the end of you there, bud. <laughs> yeah, I think some of the motocross days experience helped me out there. Um, yeah, I'll probably say to be honest with you, um, it was a very close call, and uh, would uh, to get back out on the track and still be out front was awesome. You know, Tim, uh, look, looking back at history here a little bit. Uh, you have some experience in, uh, you know, sheet metal behind the late model a little bit, if I remember correctly. You took uh, some spins around the late model back at the old Pittsburgh uh, Speedway. And uh, how's that going? Are you, I mean, do you uh, have that late model still at your place? Or maybe if the time is right, yeah. you know, you're not running the sprint car, you're still going to run a late model? Or, or what's going on there? Yeah, actually, um, it's just a great late model. And, you know, for Pittsburgh, it's 18 minutes from the house. So, um, I got to race it twice this year. It's decent. Um, it, it's just one of them deals. It, it, it's all. It's a new challenge. There's so much different things on a late model, and it's, it makes it really fun to, to tinker with. And, uh, I actually really enjoy it. Um, it's just hard to get time to run on it or, or we'll work on it, even you know, be ready. Now you know, Tim. You know we're seeing some sprint car drivers dabble in in, in both divisions, and and obviously Donnie Shots does it, and, and you you've been doing it. Why is that? Just to get more races under your belt? Because it seems like, you know, back in the day, you drivers in sprint cars, you would just go to whatever race you wanted to. Now it seems like if you're part of a 
a, a series. You can only run their races and, and not go anywhere else, stray off the trail, do whatever. But why do you think some of these sprint car drivers are dabbling in both late miles and sprint cars? Um, I don't know. Like for me, it's just it's a challenge. You know, to try to be good in it. And, uh, it's something new that uh, gets your interest. You know, and, uh, it's a uh, you know it's a lot of work for you, know, and um, you got to commit to it or you don't. But it's I don't know. It's just uh, I think some of it you can make relate. You know, to a sprint car, it's kind of the opposite. It does the left rear shocks on the right front. <laughs> Like ours is on electric, so I mean it's it's definitely different. But uh, you definitely get to learn. It keeps you sharp, keeps you on your toes, and you know keeps you ideas for different things. Now I was I was on Twitter. I was kind of just messing around a, a while back, and I I ran across this. I guess you have like a little go kart track in your backyard or something there. That Schaefer Speedway. I saw a video of you ripping around in a. Uh, one of your original four tens that was painted up like your one of your first cars running in the track. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah, we, we have uh, the white now play over here, uh, like playing some lights on it. Um, it started off as me about eight buddies duping off, and more and more people kept coming, and and we we do it to have fun. Um, there's a lot of guys that never get the experience or something like that, and it's real reasonable. So, I mean, we run just um, them clones that they sell at Harbor Freight for 100 bucks, and uh, pick up a little car for a or or somewhere and we go out and, you know, we got about 18 to 20 shows a year. But we try to run it like a regular race. You know, we have seats and dash and, and features. Definitely. Now, I think the main topic we've been asking almost every driver this year is Port Royal. You spent a lot of time at Port Royal this year, and I believe we might have asked you this back on our pre-race show during the Tuscarora 50, but what's your thoughts on what they have done with Port Royal and the track prep and everything that's just gone on up there at the Speed Palace? It's really amazing. Those guys have done an awesome job. Um, <laughs> outstanding. I mean, the new lighting is really, you know, the seating, the lighting, the track shaping the barn around like, Really nice. Um, the clay is awesome. I mean, just everything about it. You know, they could tell them guys are doing it from their heart. Man. They love. Uh, it seems like you're broken up there a little bit, Tim. Uh, Port Royal Speedway absolutely agreed. Uh, uh, you know, they they done a phenomenal job uh, of pretty much reviving that whole facility and, and racetrack. But uh, you know, you won the Knoxville Nationals back in 2010, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's talk a little bit about Knoxville. What you know, what throughout the week, the format, what does it take to get back into Knoxville Nationals victory lane? Well, it's really it's about having a, a great team. You know, your, your engine program is going to be great. Your team's going to be great. Just everything you got to be, you know, you got to make things happen there, and, and you got to have a little bit of luck too. But still, in the day, you got to have a fast car on that great team. Now. We, we talked a little bit about how you've really been all over the place, and a lot of fans, especially younger fans, probably don't remember you being here in Central PA Weekly in that Apple car. Talk a bit, a little bit about, I mean, what was it like coming in here to Central PA? I mean, how long did you expect to stay, or did it go as you p hoped it would go? And, you know, did it really make you a better driver going forward, you know, running these tracks here in Pennsylvania Weekly? It was a really neat opportunity there. I, I really had a lot of a lot of fun with Lee and Ed. And, um, they definitely made me go to the next step. I didn't know I could run that hard. <laughs> but uh, the, the competition's outstanding. You know, uh, the fans are outstanding. They're they're into it. They know more about it. Those crew guys know. But uh, it it definitely definitely helped my career. I I wanted to stay longer. I got I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to go on the road right out all deal. And, you know, Lee's like, you got to go, you know. And we, I think we ran second, mainly about 20 times. Never did get the win together. We said before, hopefully before we die, we can get a win together. Now, if the opportunity would arise again, would you come back to Central PA, or would you rather just stick with this kind of tr true outlaw tour that you're uh, that you're running right now? Yeah, right now, I do. I, I'm having a fun, really good time, and uh I still get to race everywhere. I like I like traveling the different places and stuff. It, it makes it really neat. 
You know, I got a little funny story uh, about Tim here. One night at Lincoln Speedway, uh, I forget where they were at, and it rained out. And, and shocker, Lincoln Speedway gets it in. So Tim, Tim shows up a little late after warm-ups, okay? Pulls the trailer in, comes out, brings uh, – t- t- I can hear Tim laughing in the background. He already knows what I'm going to say. But uh, Tim brings the car out, you know, gets heat in the motor. Comes out in a heat race. He's like, the last car out there. They start to warm him up, to line him up in the heat race. What does Tim do? Tim gets a little too high coming off of turn number four, hits the wall, and, and turn, turns the car upside down, lining up for a heat race. And, and I, every time I see Tim, I bust his balls about it. But, uh, you, you know, Tim, you've been around this sport a, a long time. And, and where do you see 410 sprint car racing, uh, let's just say, in, in 10, 15 years? Oh, it's hard to say, you know. Uh, it seems like everything's picking back up, though, I mean, the last couple of years. So I'd love to see it carry on, you know, and younger guys get the opportunity like I have. I, I got to race pretty much uh, since 95 for a living. So um, I'd just love to see it get stronger, get better, and let, you know, where a lot of people get opportunity to go out and, and be on the road and race for a living. Now, what about some of the younger competition we've been having here in Central PA? You know, there's been a lot of young guys really flexing their muscle this year. You know, we have Anthony Macri pick up with Matt Campbell picked up a couple wins this year. What's your thoughts on the future of the sport here in Central PA? Uh, it looks good, you know, especially when you got Port Royal ready to step up the plate and, you know, update their track. And, you know, it goes a long way. I mean, a lot of people see that and it shows interest and, you know, we need these young guys coming up too, so we, we can keep our racing strong. Now, in another regards to that, though, we've seen, especially here this year in Central PA, and a lot of some people seem to complain about it, and I think it's a great thing. But we've seen guys like your Kyle Larson's, your Ricky Stenhouse, your Casey Kane's, your Tony Stewart's, these big name guys who are really coming back to the sport that made them who they were. And some people get upset so they're like, there's too many people here. And I'm like, how could you be upset that there's too many people here? There's too many cars here. How do you feel about, you know, a guy like Kyle Larson who is sitting up top in the NASCAR standings showing up 40 times a year at these local tracks and bringing fans back to the sport? I think it's awesome. I really do. Uh, it's hats off to them guys to do that, man. It's amazing the love there is for strike racing. I'm just imagining them guys are out making – Real money, they're coming back playing around in a sprint car where they can, you know, they can get hurt or whatever. Pretty easy, but it's the love for it. I mean, it's sprint car racing it makes a strong love, and, and like I said, I've been doing it for a couple of years now. But uh, it just, uh, it's really neat to see that too. To see them guys do that, because um, you don't really expect that, you know. Because a lot of times, them guys they get in that playing that NASCAR stuff, and they don't even talk to anybody. They, like they used to hang out with, and for them to come back shows that they're really good people. And, and they are really good people, Tim. And and you know when you guys see that name, Casey King, Kyle Larson, blah blah blah, in the in that field, does it maybe seem like you get up on the wheel a little harder and, and race them a little harder? You know, to to prove yourself a little bit. Not not saying that you need to prove yourself, but does it just make you get up on the uh, wheel a little harder? Oh, well, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> short and sweet. Yeah, short, boy, Tim. short and sweet. I like that. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's nice too when you're running an all star show and Tony shows up and you're like, not only did I beat you, but now you got to pay me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know, Tim. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, so the only thing to joke around. Come in and take the money. All right. So they somebody had to win it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, absolutely, Tim. You know, a, a lot. Uh, a big subject that we talk about here is cost in a, a sprint car racing. And, I mean, I know you're running for car owners, and you've done this, you know, by yourself, you know, you know, way back in the day. I think you ran in your own stuff when you were the Lernerville track champion back in 1993, if I'm correct. Maybe not. Um, but uh, cost. What do you think about the cost? Are we are we just outpricing ourselves when it comes to motors and tires and everything? Or, or do you think it's right where it should be with the times that we're in? Well, you know, it's the uh, engine deals are out of control, out of control. You know, and, and it's it'd be it'd be all right if the prices went up with the engine prices, but they haven't. And how to fix it, I don't know. You know, it's a shame. 
I, I just don't know. I mean, it, it, it's just so, it's engines are so expensive. And you got all the expenses going up and down the road and your tire bill and everything on top of it. <laughs> you know, and then, it, then we're running them less races and you got to get rebuilt. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, the only thing, if the person could go up with that, it'd be fine, but they haven't. And that's just the way it is. And, you know, the only thing I see probably down the road would be freight engines where you can run them 60 nights, you know, but they're, so everybody wants to see. Now, the question I uh, or now about the um, the engine bills here is: would it is it about the equipment they're using it, like some of the um, like the uh, motor or the pistons or uh, some of the uh, how do I say it? the um, yeah, like the pistons and all that? Is that not as high as quality as it used to be? Maybe that's why it's taken so long for them to rebuild. No, we're making so much power on them now. They're just beating themselves up so bad. Well, I mean, yeah, you do got to run them. Push it, push it to, everybody's pushing it to the limit. And, and if you want to be competitive, you got to push yours too. And it just ain't going to last as long. You know, we used to run 20, 22 nights, you know, and now you're running 10, 12 nights. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's double the money, and, but you get only half the time out of them. Now, when we were talking about before you came on, and I'd like to hear your opinion on it. I mean, obviously, you're a guy who's not running for track championships. You're not running for series championships. And we have, you know, we have freaking six, seven tracks here in Central PA that realistically could run weekly. And we probably have four or five of them that do run weekly series. What's your thoughts on, you know, obviously Eldora, uh, your Knoxville's, some of these bigger tracks that pay more money weekly that aren't running weekly series, that are really running special shows only, do you think that that's the way the sport might go here soon, where these tracks are not going to be running weekly anymore and they're just going to be running basically your outlaw shows, your all-star shows, your your non-sanctioned 40 grand to win shows? Is that the way to go? Honestly, yeah, it probably is. You know, it um, doesn't burn the people out, the fans and stuff, and they make them more hungry to come back. You know, when you run that week after week, week after week, you know, it's just a, it's a kind of a grind. Um, especially when the cost, you know, the tickets, everything's getting higher, you know, the cost to get in and the food, the beer, just everything. Um, just, you know, I don't know, it seems like it's getting out of control, but I guess uh, it's part of how the times are. Oh, Tim, let me tell you, that beer that beer racks up, buddy. Let me tell you. I'm I mean, glad he covered the bases. Yeah, cover, cover the beer. <laughs> the, the, the beer really racks up. When we're buying 30 cases every other week, it really racks we'll, up. We will pay, you know, the 20, 25 bucks to get in the race, but that beer goes up another dollar. I don't know if I can go anymore. Uh, I tell you what, or you go to the Dingus. I swear, if they raise another dollar on shots, I'm going to go bananas. I got a lot of uh, I got a lot of stories uh, about the Dingus, as we all That's we why do. we're friends with the PBR guys. <laughs> they keep us going. Going. Yeah, Tim, uh, real quick, thank you for coming on the show, but obviously you have some great sponsors uh, uh, on your cars that you run that get you up and down the road each and every weekend. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, the Rusick Excavating, it's Jeff Rusick and Joe Denyon, two partners on this deal that keep us going down the road. And, uh, and we've been trying to triple X. And um, the engine program, we got Ryder, we got Gresman, and we got Charlie Garrett. Okay. And we've won with all three, so it's pretty awesome. I'm you know, glad you got your uh, I'm glad you got your engine base covered, buddy. That's good stuff. <laughs> Real quick question. I've I never I I've heard this more this year than past years, I think. And maybe it's just because I don't know, you just take what you can get or you want to try different things out. But in recent in past years I've always known like teams to kind of if you're a rider guy, you're a rider guy. If you're a Garrett guy, you're what I mean is there is there any like issues between the motor builders when you're like hey we're gonna drop a uh, we're taking the rider out and we're gonna drop a Garrett in is that like a <laughs> is it just kind of like hey we, what whatever we got and whatever's fresh is what we're using? Uh, yeah, they're they're all they all doing a great job. Um, this ended up that way. To be honest with you, we had a couple Gresman. We needed a new engine. He couldn't do it at the time. So I ended up going to Charlie. At, I'd known Charlie for a lot of years, and I talked to him basically in the in seeing if he would build us an engine, and he did. And in my eyes, he's the best guy out there in the, in the country, in the world, in my eyes. I mean, Charlie really knows his program. And um, and then we bought that used one off Ryder, 
Mr. Charlie had called a Duke one engine. So we were looking for another one and come up with one of Hobbit's engines um, that they didn't like or whatever. Um, um, we ended up buying it. And it's uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy to have three different engine builders. <laughs> yeah, I say so. It's, it's got to be strange if you rip off three or four in a row and you're like, well, this was the... <laughs> wait, which <laughs> engine do we have in there again? <laughs> Yeah, and that's like, you know, we went to Outlaw Show up there in New York. That was like, there's a new Kresman engine, Scott Kresman from Ohio. That thing ran really great. So everything we got seemed like we're getting a, a good arsenal, you know, where we can uh, be competitive wherever we, wherever we go. And, and you are, Tim. You are competitive each and every race you enter. Thank you uh, for coming on the show uh, uh, tonight, and uh, good luck this weekend or wherever you, whatever you do this weekend, good luck at it. <laughs> All right, buddy. We're actually going to race good carts Saturday here. Atta boy. Oh, racing some good carts. Well, well, good luck uh, in go carts, and especially good luck when you're done racing go carts this Friday night. <laughs> we might have a couple beers afterwards. <laughs> yeah, don't make sure you don't let the cost go up. Thank you very much, Tim, for coming on the show, bud. All right, thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely, hey, buddy. The Still City Outlaw Tim Schaefer just joining us here, and uh, he's always a good time to talk to. Always worried about that bottom line about you know how you keep the cost of beer from going up. You keep <laughs> buying the damn stuff. <laughs> Tim Schaefer, I think, will keep us in business for a long time. Absolutely, Tim. You know, Tim. Tim, what what a hell of a guy he is. You know, I I will say, um, just personally, I think I I never really necessarily appreciated Tim Schaefer like I maybe should have because. I mean, for years on the All Star Tour, it was like it was either going to be Blaney or Schaefer yeah, or Kevin. Yeah. It didn't matter; yeah. it, they were just going to win. And and it always seemed like I mean, when I think of the All Stars, I think Dale Blaney. That's he's the all time winning, winning a Striver. And Kevin is kind of the guy now. But then you look back, and I'm like, damn, Tim Schaefer won a Knoxville Nationals. He he won I think two in a row with different car owners on the, like he didn't matter what he was in, he was winning races. And now that I and this is why this year I think I'm more I, I really have recognized him this year because he's in a new ride, he's going all over the place and I was like, damn, that car is just good everywhere they go. He's not just an all star driver. He's not just a guy that hits Ohio like he is up. I mean, honestly, if, if I had to make a poll this year right now, the top ten drivers in the country. He might be in the top five this year based on what they've been able to accomplish. I tell you what, I mean, Tim's a hell of a guy, and, and he deserves to be on a tour permanently, but I kind of miss him around here, you know, full-time running the local circuit here. I mean, nobody really knew who Tim Schaefer was when he cracked a, <laughs> when he cracked here in the Central PA in the Apple Motorsports number 12. When they said the Steel City Outlaw, I said, where the hell yeah. is the Steel <laughs> City? Yeah. Yeah. That is not Central PA. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and nobody knew who he was, but you know what? He was fast. I mean, I know, you know, you had Lee Stauffer and his old man wrenching on the car, but you could never count Tim Schaefer out in that Apple 12 running here on a weekly basis. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the perennial cars, too. For them to put him in there, I think everyone had to know. I mean, this well, I wouldn't say kid because he certainly wasn't a kid, but say this guy's pretty good. I mean, to, to land that Apple ride, and it, like you said, didn't stay very long. And, I mean, I think that being fast in the Apple car was part of the reason he was able to go up to the tour and run, you know, the Vibrant, uh, the, the Sal Michelle car, the 11. The 11, yeah. And then um, I think he might have run the 6. Uh, the Casey's General Stores yep. car, I believe, yep, too. Yep, yep. Um, he's been through the ringer in terms of good rides. He's had great rides. He's had a lot of success. And Tim Schaefer, I mean, he's not getting any younger, but he's certainly not going away. Yeah, and I really think, too, like you just said, for as long as he's been around, too, he's still good. Like, he's still racking off wins. He has four Articat All-Star Circuit Champion wins this year. He has two uh, World Outlaw Crafts Sprint Car wins this year. He has a couple other wins throughout the rest of the country. Even picked up a prelim night in the uh, National 360 Nationals there. So, Tim Schaefer, no matter what, he can still win races. Absolutely, he can. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a real quick break here. When we come back, it is your time to shine. We're going to open up the page. It's going to be a little fan forum. Whatever you want to talk about this season, next season, whatever, it's going to be up to you. Make sure you put them in the Fooling Injected Motorsports Fan Zone down below. We'll be back after this quick break. Hi, my name is Tyler Altmaier, and I am the owner and founder of Fully Injected Motorsports and FullyInjected.com, a professional short track PR firm that has been in operation since 2010. 
headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Fully Injected Motorsports focuses primarily on providing professional grade press to motorsports teams, racetracks, and organizations all throughout the country, keeping your fans and other racing enthusiasts up to date with breaking news, event schedules, and recent race results. Our original content and mass distribution service is sure to keep your sponsors as well as your team's biggest supporters in the loop and on track. For more information, contact us today at FullyInjected.com. Now, back to PA Sprint Car Live on Beer Hill Gang TV. Thank you, Tyler Altmeyer and Fully Injected Motorsports fans. And well, ladies and gentlemen, where's as our I has, said, Tyler? <laughs> don't worry, we're gonna have some good swag come next year. I'm already in talks, and we're gonna have good stuff. Uh, this is your time to shine, ladies and gentlemen. If you have anything you want to talk about from this season uh, to next season, whatever you want to talk about in the sprint car world, put them right here in the Fully Injected Motorsports fan zone. But as you do that, we're gonna preview this weekend coming up. Yes, sir. Of course, we have the final race up at the Speed Palace Sport Royal Speedway. Open wheel madness for the white. Your livestock 410 sprint cars 4,000 win for them capital renegade urc 360 sprint cars and the barrel gang pa sprint series 305 sprint cars what a way to close out the season at port royal speedway you get three very good open wheel divisions yeah and i think they're are they running the 360 division last uh, how, i believe i won't it. know until i get there i think i saw that which is okay. interesting okay. they're saving i mean or 358 whatever the division is i it's going to be 410s, 360s, 360s, 305s. I think they're running them last, which should keep some fans in the seats. I mean, yeah. that's another good division. Not that the 305s are any exception. They have drawn a great car count all year long. Um, but the one thing I want to talk about is we talked about it a little bit today, but it's not Pennsylvania, but Mansfield. Oh, baby. What oh, is going on out in Ohio? Some huge purses Sit coming down up for there. this one, boys. If well, I take a while. Uh, hey, Where's the money coming from? Number one. Well, no, before, <laughs> let, let's let the fans know what are you talking about with Mansfield well, come next year in the late Mansfield models. Running, I believe it's hundred grand to win. Yes, uh, huge race for four tens, which uh, April the twenty seven team is already committed to going to. So we've already seen some PA guys have that on their radar. They're going to Ohio. Uh, as most of you know, Mansfield. A very historic track out there um, was dirt way back in the day. The Hodden Shields, the Do I, I think Brad Doty talked about. Like guys, anybody who's anybody ran Mansfield at one point, and they converted it to an asphalt track. They had super trucks. They had Arca. Yes. They had a little bit of everything. The track kind of went to shits, basically. The money was gone. They got some investors in. They take it back to dirt. This is their first year back. They had a bit of a rough start. They lost a lot of shows due to weather. But then they come out. <laughs> they're doing... A hundred grand to win for the four tens. They're doing now. They've announced today this dirt million, which is a million dollar purse huh. for uh, super late model. Super, super late, late model. Lucas Oil it's, super late model. Yes. By the way, it's going to be sanctioned by, by Lucas them. Oil. Yes, they're they're trying to guarantee ten grand to start. Ten grand to start. It's doable. Somebody could make. That's not <laughs> if you're the right team, stuff. you can make your season in one night in this race. But it's an interesting technique they're trying and basically the theory is i think i think we talked about it they're going to guarantee two hundred thousand to win that's 100 grand, 100 grand to win it's right. the bare minimum you are going to what's the winner's going to win 100 grand but, but if the fans start buying tickets if the drivers keep signing up if the sponsors keep coming in they're capping the purse at a million which could make the winner take home 500 grand <laughs> at 10 grand to start which is out freaking rageous right but i tried to get a hold of them tonight to get them on this show because i want to know what the hell are they doing that nobody else is doing in the country but that brings up another as we've said not running weekly can you afford to do these huge purses if that's all you're doing all year and is that going to make a break is that is that better to run to a 500 grand to win race a hundred grand to win race and run a couple random shows the rest of the year and some monster trucks? What? Is that better than running weekly at Williams Grove? Are you more profitable doing that? I don't know, but wow, Mansfield. Well, what I think is going to help them there is that it is Lucas Oil late models for that. That is going to be huge for them because they always get a following no matter where they go. And plus, late models are very predominant there, especially it's kind of the gateway, to, uh, almost the gateway to the west, if you say, because the farther south and west you go, you get more late model action. So... They're not going to have a problem with car count, I think. If they were putting out this purse, you know, at least 100 grand to win, you're going to get car counts there. I think it's going to be – weather's going to have to play in their factor, and it's going to be how they hype this event, too. I mean, they got a lot of talk already by putting out this Dirt Million. But I don't think this is going to be as much of a problem as I think the 100 grand races, because I believe I'm right. 
that's unsanctioned for the 410 sprint cars. Correct. That is unsanctioned. But that's the way. And then we talked about this. How, we talked about the Dirt Classic. We were here. We, we love those guys. Great event. Yep. And we talked about if you're Williams Grove, if you're Lincoln, if you're anybody, and you want to compete with what Port Royal has done, making the 50 Grand Test score 50, and they, it's all-star sanctioned. But if you're a local track and you want to make some news, you want to get a car count in there, you want to make it as big as possible, unsanctioned is the way to go because you can pull from the outlaws. You can pull from the all-stars. You can pull from the local guys. You can, In terms of these late model guys, you can pull from everywhere. Yeah. But here's... Unsanctioned, open tire rule, whatever the hell you need to do to get cars in, it's going to happen. But here's the thing. If you don't have it sanctioned, or if you want it unsanctioned, great. There's nothing wrong with that. But then those sanctioning bodies can put other races on oh, against not to that. Mention, if you, you know what I mean? Sanctioned, you got to find another area to pull some money from because you're not getting that. It's, it's just, it's I don't know. It's that's, wild, <laughs> and, and I think that's also why the Dirt Classic kind of works so well because the I believe I'm right. The Outlaws are out in the Midwest somewhere or out west, if I'm correct, and then the All Stars had the four crowns at Ohio. Yeah, Eldora's kind of close. If you want to consider it close being eight hours, but still, I mean, that's kind of why Dirt Classic falls right because of where it's fall on the calendar, too. And, if, and you know, a little off topic, but not one guy who's got to be licking his chops for that 100 grand show is Ryan Smith, who picked up oh, two wins in the night same night him. the other night at Mansfield. And I tell you what, I, the beginning of the year, I was really excited about because it it's a track I've never been to. And they started off, they were doing these three crown shows or whatever you want to call them where they were having they were having late models USAC and whatever and four tens and they had rain a ton of rain to start the year and I was like man you're a new track we're not new but you're coming back you want to make a statement it was dusty as hell the tracks the races were running until one two o'clock in the morning and all I saw was people complaining honestly on social media just people going what are they doing what are they doing what the hell this is not good but whatever they're doing is obviously working because the fans are interested, the purses are going up, and the drivers keep coming. So, I, I don't know. Whoever the promoter is out there in Mansfield, I, I do. I want to talk to him and see how we can do this in Central PA because you put, you put the word million on any show. <laughs> you, you, you got, got some balls, yeah, yeah. and you've got, you've got some big plans. You so. got a lot of attention. And, and Brian Snyder, you do make a great point. Oral Baltus, uh, if I remember correctly, the Mopar Million – Back in uh, late uh, when was it? Two thousand three. Yep, at, uh, at Eldora Speedway, it was a wingless Steve show. Absolutely, I think didn't Did Jack, Jack win it? Jack Hodge. Yeah, Jack Hodge show won. Stevie Smith ran a wingless car race, as a race. lot of guys did because that was unheard of. The Motor Million <laughs> was unheard of. Earl Baltz has thought of the idea. He took it to his track, Eldora Speedway, and, and it was a great event. And, and I mean, it's not you know he he put a lot of risk into that. But it paid off in the end. And I think, too, also, look at the names you just talked about. Jack Onshield, Stevie Smith. Those guys took the wing off for that. I was going to say, I don't, think, I don't know if Stevie Smith ever ran a wingless show in his life. And he runs second out the door for a Mopar Million. Right. It's, it's unreal to hear these guys. Nowadays, I don't even know if you can get these guys to take the wing off. I think Parker Price Miller brought up a good point the other week when we had him on the Peru show at the Champion Race Royal National Open at Williams Grove, was that the injury factor, too. It's a lot higher in a wingless car than what it is in a wing car because of that wing on top. You know, you have that wing kind of cushion and everything. But yet, these guys, you know, went balls to the wall to go for that two hundred grand and that million-dollar purse that Earl and them put up back in 2003. I mean, w if they would do that again, would we see guys take the wing off? That's that's a know. question. That, that's I mean, a, that's a great I think question. Any time, you know, we just talked to Tim Schaefer, and I said, how did you make your schedule? And he said, purse, purse, yep. purse. You put up that kind of money, and it's going to make a lot of guys do a lot of crazy things, um, especially if it's one night and maybe if it's sandwiched in between a show at Eldora or maybe if you can get in the right time. But on the other end of the spectrum, we talk about Mansfield. They're doing all these things. The purses are going up. The purses are getting crazy. But on the same week, you have the announcement that Fremont Speedway has been sold yeah. to the fair board or yep. whatever. Yeah, it's a fair board. You've got Sus I mean, uh, Sealands Grove Speedway who's in the news because they're fighting an amusement tax that's yep. basically threatening their season. So while you have some tracks that seem to be thriving and seem to be just taking it to the next level, you've got other tracks who seem to be, I don't want to say struggling, but not necessarily working as well. And it's like, I, 
I don't know. I mean, that, that makes you wonder. You see here Mansfield, you hear all these big things, and you're like, sport is in great hands. And then you hear other things, you're going, well, we might lose one here. We might lose a track. We don't know. I mean, where do we stand in terms of racing and how – I mean, how long is it sustainable? Well, and, and you know what, Seals River, I don't want to see any, any more of our uh, Central PA tracks go away, but it's like – you know, you know, Sealands Grove, and they got big plans. They want to move the pit area out, outside, which is great. That's a great improvement. Um, but you know what? The 360s, the 360 division in this area is a, is a wreck right now. I, I'm not afraid to say it. I mean, it, it's a wreck. You, you Local about, news articles, you pay attention to social media. The 360 division is a wreck And now we've got right another now. division that they're which taking the wings off. We don't need. In Central PA. And I, we you know, do not need I'm not going to lie to you. Listen. I'm all for racing, more racing, more cars, more events, whatever. In my opinion, and it might ruffle some feathers here, in my opinion, the reason Eastern Storm works is because it's just like the Outlaws. It's just like the All-Stars. It's once a year. People are excited. They come in. They're going to pack the stands for a week straight because it's the only time they're going to get it all year long. If you give them Eastern Storm every week, basically. It's going to run out. People are going to go. The nostalgia. Seen it. Seen it yeah. Done. Yeah. Moving on. Eastern Storm lacks then, too. I get what they're trying to do. They want to bring wingless racing to Central PA and a more prevalent and more happening more. But is it really good, especially when the 360 no. division is already struggling as it is, to no. basically split it in half and go, uh, yeah. guys, put the wings on or take it yeah, off? Because I don't see guys yeah. doing both. It right. is. And like you said, it's the nostalgia and just seeing USAC once a year. You see something different for six nights out of the year, going to tracks all across the state for whether it's from down in um, – um, Grandview or over to Port Royal, you know, the big half mile or else like this year, we have Williams Grove, Susquehanna, Lincoln. You have such diversity. Now you have these guys coming in with URC. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's good to see, you know, another sprint car division. But yeah, as Fred Raymer said a couple weeks ago, there may be too many divisions here. And I think this might be one of those things that may, that may hurt then, USAC down the road. And this is the thing too. I mean, we said there's too many divisions, but when we talked about it, with, and I will especially say like with Steelers group, like uh, the Super Sportsman, Steve Wilber brought the wingless sportsman to Path Valley on Friday nights. Right. And the reason the wingless sportsman for Path Valley works on a Friday nights is because the only track they're running up against is Williams Grove. The sportsmen are different. It's a different division. It's a low. It's cost less to get in. It's a different type of racing. So, you know, if you like 410 racing, if that's your deal and you love Williams Grove and that's where you're at, you're probably going to go there. But if you might be trying to save a few bucks getting in the pits, if you're a family, like the Silver Springs days, when you could go to four different tracks on Saturday night, but Silver Springs packed the house every night right. because they had three different divisions that were different from anybody else running in the area, and it was tailored towards families. And it was said, you want to come with your families, you want to pay $12 to get in or $7 to get in and see 80 cars tonight. And that's why Susquehanna works right now, what they're doing on Saturday nights, is because they're not trying to shove – 360s per se down my throat when the 410s are racing 20 minutes down the street. It's the same division, basically a smaller motor. Put those guys together, run the 360s and the 410s together on the same night like they do with the 358s at the Grove. And if you want to run against them, put a smaller division like the Sportsman, like the late models, something that's not even remotely the same. Take Cut the cost to get it in half and angle it towards families and you're going to get it. If you're going to try to give me wingless 360 racing or 360 racing within 20 to 40 miles of three other tracks that are running basically the same thing, you're going to struggle to get fans in the in there. You're going to struggle to get cars there. I agree. It's just you got to have something different, and frankly, it's not that different. It's just a smaller motor. But, uh, yeah, exactly. I agree. I, and, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Uh, well, I want to just say, I mean, I think our racing season is getting too long. I mean, these guys, I mean, there's only so many, a handful of big teams in the area, and the rest are family operation, if you will. And I think our racing season is getting too long. There's way too many, you know, Sunday races. There's way too many, you know, in the week races. It, it, I think it's way too long. We need to nip it in the bud so these guys can come to races later in the year. Look at the month from, I want to say, from July until September. There's almost a Sunday show 
a week through there. So not only is that hurting the drivers, but the fans too that have to you know beer, fork out the beer money. Prices. Yeah, beer prices, yeah. Never forget the beer prices. Thank you, Tim. But I want to bring this up here in the fully injected motorsports fans. And there's two comments to kind of go together here. Kevin Schmidt goes, I would, I want to go to five special races, then five weekly races. I don't want to downplay the weekly races, but I like the atmosphere of special races. That's fine, but. Then Bre- or Brian Warner goes – now, this goes on the wingless thing here, and I'm going to kind of tie these two together. Wingless are incredible at Linda's, Lanco, and Path in their small track cars. If you get them on the small tracks, you will get the right driver's series. That works for the 600s. How I want to tie this together, though, is if you run six straight races in six nights in a Speed Week-type format, is that too much racing throughout the year? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like with USAC, I get it because they want to bring that. You don't see that that often. You know, you kind of want to go it's, these it's different tracks. It's nostalgia. Yeah, exactly. Thing. It's different. Plus, the racing always good no matter whatever track they go to. It seems like whenever they come in. But now, if you look at a Speed Week type format, we're, you know, okay, that's another nostalgia thing. You do 10 races in nine nights or, or 10 nights, 11 nights, whatever it is. But when you have these four race weekends back to back to back, is that when it gets too much throughout the season? Listen, this is not wingless country here in Central yeah, exactly. PA. Wingless, okay, wingless six hundreds maybe. Half mile, half okay, tracks are not, you need the bull rings. That's why. I mean, listen, I love Eastern Storm, but Port Royal's a half mile track, I, and they're pulling saying, some great I racing. I love Eastern Storm, but if you told me every year, tell me if you need to, if you're going to go to half the Eastern Storm shows, right. which ones you go? And I'm going to go Lincoln, Path Valley, Grandview. And Susky, Susky, because right. now, I will, they're different. They're all different tracks. So many the rest people, of them, big tracks, and great racing. I love watching them at Port Royal. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I love watching them at Williams Grove and the Silver Crown guys yeah. once a year. And but no doubt about it, even the midgets, the USAC midgets, they run better races on the bull rings. That's what. Linda Solanko, per- perfect example. The racing has been phenomenal there the past two years. The USAC Amsoil National Midgets have been there. And even Susky, like they put on a great show at Susky. But it's a car count thing where ARDC is not getting the car count. But when USAC comes in, they get the car count. Now, a lot of people have been clamoring, though, for Pat Valley to get that USAC 410 show. But also, I've been here now that there's a rumor mill going around that there may be a second Eastern Storm between New Jersey and New York. That might take away some of the nostalgia of them just coming and running PA. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> with this sub- too much going on, with, folks. With, with this subject, we don't need another 360 division, winged or wingless. It's not going to work, okay? It's just an awful, god-awful idea. Get trash it, throw it up in a ball, throw it in the trash. It's oh, awful. Man. You need to work on your 360 division uh, with the wing on it. Or you're not going to have any cars around, period. Because in my opinion, in my opinion, I think guys are spending too much on a 360 motor uh, for running half of the person what 410s do. When you could spend the same on a 410 motor and run for double of what 360 runs. Period. Yeah, I mean, it goes with the 305s too. 305s. I know what some of you guys are putting into your car. Shenanigans. Get okay. it, big fella. Let's uh, go. Okay. Y- y- you need <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> What, shenanigans. Farva. Farva. Come on now. Farva. Farva. <laughs> Step up to 410. Knock it off, okay? Spit, spit, quit spending as much money as you want Can on a 410 say, and night, step it up to where you can run for real I'm money. I'm guilty of this myself tonight, apparently. <laughs> we opened this thing up to open forum, and all we've been doing is bitching for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about some positive here is that – Let's look at what next year brings because, yeah, there may be a downside in what some of the car counts may be, but yet there could be an upside because of all the you know, the newer names coming up here. But yet also what we saw this year with Port Royal, speak of the devil, Lucas Oil 8 Miles announced this week, they're coming back April 22nd for a 10,000 win show. I'm loving that. Excited. That was a great show last year. Yes, sir. So with that being said, if this is an early announcement from Port Royal, their second early announcement with the Tuscarora 50 next year being 51 grand to win, what else can we expect out of the Speed Palace? And what other tracks is this going to make the tracks step up their game to try and go up against Port Royal in trying to – how do I want to say it? Well, I just want to know, wanna, I, was Colton watching? Because I'm tired of seeing those emojis of the whistling guy and all of his ideas he's got <laughs> coming for uh, next year. Let's let's just tell me what the hell's going on. Let's, yeah, let's see something. And, and here's on. the thing. With Port Royal, the 22nd, that's probably a Sunday I'm going to assume, yes, right? Yes, it is Sunday. So, so. – with Luke Soil, they're at, they at Hagerstown the night before. Okay, great, good job. 
the racing at Hagerstown for the last 15 years hasn't been good. Uh, but maybe the Grove, if they wanted to, and it all depends on whatever management wants to do over there and sanctioning fee, blah, blah, blah. But maybe on that Friday, you have the regular 410 sprint cars, and you have a Lucas Oil event paying ten grand to win. That would be great. That would be absolutely phenomenal. That's, because- that's an event. We want more events. You know, not weekly. I know it's a weekly deal, but we want it to be more of an way, event, and I think that's more of an event. By the way, you always put the uh, whistle on there now. Can oh. I do, and also, <laughs> this is going to probably sound like a rant. Go but, for it. We've been ranting so, all night, Justin. So, so Port Royal runs the Outlaw Show on Saturday. Great, great thing, obviously. Why can't we Love have Port a two-day Royal. show? Love it. Well, not even that. But... If I'm a fan, and I obviously am, I wasn't at Port Royal. But you show up? and I will say, part of and this popped into my mind as part of a reason why not to go to this show. If you, if I'm coming to watch the World of Outlaws, and I'm coming to watch the All Star Circuit of Champions, if I'm coming to watch a premier event for a big purse, that's what I want to see. I want to see heats. I want to see a dash race. I want to see a feature, and I want to get the hell home at a reasonable time. I don't need support divisions on big shows. Yes. I understand you're trying to give the fans what they pay for, and you want to give them more. But me personally, and I know this is probably going to piss some people off because, you know, the 305 guys love running these events, the, the late models, whatever they bring in for these things. I don't want support divisions at our big shows. I just want to see them, and not, I want to get home before 1 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday or a Sunday that's what I want. We I'm, didn't get home that late. No. I'm not saying you did, I know, I know, but I'm I saying I'm, on I'm a reasonable regular advocate. night, we'll, yeah. we'll get, I don't want to see the night dragging on. Fans, what do you think yeah. uh, on this conversation right now? When you go to an event, you have the Outlaws or, or All-Stars or Lucas Oil, Late Miles, uh, World of Outlaw Crest, Late Miles, whatever you want to see. Do you want to see them just have that division, or would you like to see a support division along with that but big show? The girl, we're not even out there until midnight sometimes when the Outlaws are in. I don't get why we can be out of there you know, at 10 o'clock clock you know on a saturday night plus by the way i think the times of being there to attract to one two o'clock are over because not a lot of people have those monday through friday nine to five jobs anymore or seven to three jobs there's a lot of people anymore including myself that have to get up you know at five six in the morning get to work even on saturday and sundays and we don't want to be out all night long especially at the racetrack some of us driving you know, an hour home exactly you know <laughs> especially you know when you have that long drive especially like myself here you you want to get out early. You want to kind of have that quick show, get yourself home, and you know not be groggy for work the next day. Because trust me, it's hell, folks. And I know a lot of you know about that. Oh, get your, because you drink too yeah, much. Well, get shut yeah. up. Yeah, I want to reveal get, them an alcohol. Get your uh, big boy pants on. But no, um, it's, but seriously though, that's one of those things that I think kind of play into it, is that people just don't want to be there all night long. But again. you know what. The Grove has been good each and every week. Hey, you're uh, right, exactly. Uh, you could be, you, it's only the Outlaw shows, you've really. You've been ending the show by 10, 10, 15, and, and that's, that's people, you know, always say, well, I've got to bring my family. I don't want to be there no more than a movie, you know? And, and before, man, way back in the day, I remember getting out of the Grove or some other tracks at 1 o'clock on a regular oh, I mean, basis. Plenty of nights. I mean... At the Springs, we'd be getting out of the Springs on Saturday nights, and they'd be setting up for the flea market on yeah, Sunday. With 80 cars there in one division. <laughs> yeah, in one division. Right, 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 right. But, uh, no, I mean, listen, that's not, I, you know, that's not a knock on these divisions. No. I, I pre- you know, I'm sure they, I know they appreciate the fact to be able to run on a big stage with a lot of fans in the, in the stands. But, and I'm just going to be realistic. I And maybe this makes me a bad fan. I don't know, but. If, if I'm there and the outlaws are done and they're done, the feature's over, I'm probably going to get to my car to try to beat traffic a little bit, and I'm probably not going to stick around. Kudos to the dedicated fans who are staying all night to watch the extra divisions and supporting those guys. <laughs> no, you had to. But it ain't me. I'm sorry. No, I, 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 if I didn't have to, I'd still stay for it anyway because yeah. I, I just love racing, and, yeah. and I don't have anything to do, and I really yeah, don't give a shit. I mean, I, I, to be honest, the E-Mods, they were a great support division. But they're not bringing the cars, is what I thought. So, in my opinion, maybe we get a new, uh, a new support division. And, and I mean, I, listen, and here's one that's been go, in the court listen. World. Let's talk about the world, the uh, Bad Boy Buggy World of Outlaw World Finals. Okay, go for it. They got three divisions. Okay, now they're not they're not support divisions. They're the best divisions you could ask for in one show. They get fifty sprints. They get seventy late models. And they're probably going to get 50, if you 55. Held that, if you held that event in the middle of the season, would you get the same card? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely okay. not. No, nope. It's the last race for everybody nope, in the country. No, but we're talking about divisions. So when you go to the event, you, you pay good money, and it's a great event. If you ha- have never been down to Charlotte at the end of the year, make sure you go. It's a great event. But are you just going to th- be there and watch your division and then bounce after the – I think it's different, though. I mean, that the, that 
that event per se, that is the final race of the year. Basically, if you were there, you probably are not planning on attending any more races for the rest of the year. That is the end, yeah. basically. Well, it is, yeah. So, yeah, you're going to soak it all in. You're going to take in every lap, and you're going to stay until the last beer is gone. <laughs> and even after that, you're going to find somebody next to you that still's got one, and you're going to watch the hey, rest. Hey, can I bump uh, Like I said, if you hold that event in July... I don't think you don't get fifty cars, sixty cars in each division. You get thirty, twenty, and thirty, maybe. I, th- in my opinion, but I don't know. I mean, hey, listen, you know what? You know what I want to do is piss people off night yeah, apparently you know, because I'm yeah. sure it's gonna happen. You know what I want to do? Know what, though? A lot of people have been agreeing with you guys though. You know what I want to do? I mean, for next year, I le- I just love racing. Uh, I think next year for the World of Outlaw uh, Craftsman Sprint Car Series event up at Port Royal, uh, maybe have a two day show if you want to do it. If not. Let's put a 2,000 win, 3,000 win super late model shell and call it a day. I, I don't care what you do. Just get me out of the track at a reasonable time. Oh, the yep. beer still in the cooler. Yep. <laughs> Tell what you said. I'm the the key is the beer should not be in the cooler when you leave, Justin. That's the key. Yeah, exactly. But I think you're right. I was going to say that super late models would fit, I think, better than what Absolutely. the E-mods would. Make it be- the last Route 35 series of yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Maybe. Instead of ending it at the Tusk Over 50, which is a great ending, by the way. Yeah. Bring him in there. And not, um, we're not talking about the seal block late models, too. We need super late models up there. If you're going to run that, why not just showcase the best drivers you have there? And you might even bring in some invaders, too, because I don't know if there's really any racing going on, you know, during that time period there when um, the or World of Outlaws are at Port Royal. Ah, you might get some invaders in. That's what, uh, You never know. Yeah, you, you never know. Uh, but I like to see that show go uh, 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 Friday and Saturday, not just a Saturday. But it is what it is. It's another World of Outlaws show in Central PI. Here's the thing, though. I don't know what the day is going to be that for next year because apparently <laughs> Lawrenceburg or somewhere else or Terre Haute scheduled a date already for the World of Outlaws on the normal Port Royal weekend. So could that be moved back to the summer or could we see it move maybe a little bit closer to World Finals again? I mean, I think with the improvements you've seen Port Royal do this year, I and I'm not – obviously nothing's happened yet. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Port Royal have two dates next year. I think they should. Yeah, they You don't should. have to have a, 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 a one-day show in July – and then bring them back here in October. Just have a two-day show in October. That's all you need to have. Well, Lincoln used to have, you know what, two outlaw shows uh, a year. I mean, what happened to that? So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, we got a lot of time to mull this over until we're back in February. <laughs> I hate this. We do, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another great episode of PA Sprint Card Live right here on Bear Hill Gang TV. If you have nothing to do tomorrow... It's the first night of the Linda's National Open for the 270cc Microsmiths and the 600 Micros. Uh, go there, enjoy your time, uh, then go up to Port Royal on Saturday for a three-division. Susquehanna next week. Absolutely. Uh, we have a show. Don't count us out just yet. We have we have about, uh, of course, you'll see. It all depends on whatever. Uh, we have we have uh, about two more shows a PA Sprint Card Live coming up to wrap up 2017. i like to uh, thank you fans for tuning in. That's Justin. That's Bert. I'm Earl. Of course, our great man Andy behind the keyboards tonight. Wishing all of you a great evening.